Bruins win, baby. UCLA fight, fight, fight. They're 5 0. Oh. Let's go, Bruins. Let's get right to it. UCLA 5 0 oh, knocks off number 15th ranked Washington in the Rose Bowl. 40 to 32. Matchup where they led by as many as 24 points in the fourth. Let's get right to it on this postcast. Let's hit that music, baby. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everybody, it's your favorite host, Zach Anderson Yoxheimer. You can follow me on Twitter at Zach and Yox. You can also go follow the show Twitter at Locked On Bruins. But this is Locked On UCLA Postcast, an episode brought to you by none other than Underdog Fantasy. The easiest way to spice up your college football Saturday, but it's a Friday night to end September. The Bruins 5-0 as they beat the Washington Huskies who came in and ranked as high as 15th, ranked 18th in the coaches poll, and one of the bigger wins in the Chip Kelly era. Can't say it's the biggest win, but a strong win in the start of this three-game gauntlet for the UCLA Bruins. Solid start to finish, despite trailing early, trailing 10-9, to but it's the Bruins who walk away with the victory. Initial reaction here on this postcast, a nice win, they had to hold on dearly despite being outscored 16 to nothing in the fourth quarter. But the Bruins get the first downs. Three first downs late on the final drive. A fired up Dorian Thompson Robinson, the super senior, comes in and helps lead the Bruins with Zach Charbonnet and the Jake Bobo coming out party. Excuse me. Horse voice. Let's go, Bruins. We should see them in the top 25 next week. When everything leads and all roads lead back to the Rose Bowl against Utah. Let's go back into it. It was an early start for Washington. A big third down pickup after the Bruins looked pretty solid defensively. A fourth and six deep into UCLA territory turned into a 33-yard strike for the Michael Penix-led offense. The Bruins then came down, marched down the field in the red zone, and could not score on fourth and goal. Set up a Washington set for a mistake. One of three mistakes by Washington tonight. The safety on the fumble recovery. The Bruins then went back, scored a touchdown on the ensuing drive. And then, for the most part, after that Washington field goal, to put it a 10-9 game, the Bruins, with four straight scores, three touchdowns, four field goals, led 26-10 to at the half, got the touchdown leading out of the third into the third quarter to go up 23 points. And then headed into the fourth quarter up 40 to 16. This is a Washington team that had been dominating in first quarters, dominating in third quarters. And it's the Bruins who outscored them in both of those. Ironically enough, it's UCLA who had dominated in fourth quarters. And Washington actually made it a lot closer than it should have been. And while people may look at the final score and Washington played their hearts out to get it back to even within a one score game, the Bruins, for the most part, pretty much dominated through this night. They needed things to go their way, and you could argue that this game shouldn't have been a one-score game. Twice the Bruins went forward on fourth down deep into Washington territory. It could have been a three-score game before halftime if Chip Kelly didn't go for it, but the Bruins couldn't get in on fourth and short with Charbonnet, and it was some nice plays by the Bruins offense. DTR, 300 yards in the air, three touchdowns, ended up going 24 for 33, including the big seven-yard pickup to Hudson Habermill, yes, the kid who just before the season got put on scholarship gets the big pe- gets the big catch to help seal the deal for the Bruins here to make them 5 and 0. Charbonnet, fantastic. 5 catches over 50 yards was amazing. 124 yards on the ground, a touchdown, but again, it was the Jake Bobo coming out party. 142 yards, two touchdowns. They're still coming out with the final box score, so I think on this initial reaction, I, I can't really get all the true, true sacks. I think I counted two sacks. The Bruins did get pressure. They were able to get Penix down for the first time this season, and they flustered him enough in the pocket for him to throw two early interceptions that really changed the game. And the Bruins, 
made the plays they needed to do defensively. Uh, a Penix Jr. who has been fantastic, almost led his Husky team back in it. Well, the Bruins put up 500 yards of offense, almost nine and a half yards per pass, close to five yards per rush. Meanwhile, they were able to contain, for the most part, a Washington running attack. And what came down to key crucial mistakes, Washington made the, the two, three turnovers, if you think about it, two interceptions, the fumble that led to the safety, and nine penalties for 150 yards. The Bruins played a clean game, avoided the turnover, and what were the keys to the game? Get pressure, protect DTR. They did both of those things. Come out and kind of flummox Washington and change the trend. They like to come out and really change things when it comes to stepping out of the gate. They did step out of the gate with the early touchdown, but it was the Bruins who punched them in the mouth at the end of the first quarter, led it in the break, and again accelerated to begin the third and end the third quarter. For the most part, to put away the Huskies despite their late roar late. And they played clean football to the Bruins, and it was Washington who, despite Chip Kelly's gambling early, it was Washington who made the first mistake and were the team and was the team that made the mistakes tonight. You can argue one way or another whether it was Washington overrated, whether or not, whether the Bruins played well, got some calls. Who knows? Bruins played a fundamentally good game tonight, and outside of a couple of fourth and shorts, DTR running out of bounds late. For, I, don't, I don't really know why he was running out of bounds, but he was fired up. I'm fired up, too. And Bruins fans, I know I was so excited. We didn't even get to an A-clap. Get those hands in the air. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see L.A. You see L.A. Fight, fight, fight. Go Bruins. Just so excited. The energy is here late on September 30th here on the West Coast. October 1st, if you're anywhere other than for the Pacific time zone or in Hawaii. The Bruins 5-0, 2-0, tied for first atop the Pac-12 before tomorrow's games, before the Saturday slate of Week 5 college football. The Bruins get the win 40-32 to over Washington, knocking off a 15th-ranked Husky squad who was playing their first road game, and it kind of truly showed with the, a lot more fans in the Rose Bowl, a good showing, and we needed to get even better come this weekend against Washington. I come this weekend, I say, against Utah. All the energy, everything, it gets even ramped up with the physicality, everything in between as the Bruins' defense held up for the most part. They did give up 30-plus points for the second time this season, but for the fourth out of five games, UCLA puts up 40 points or more. Almost 500 yards of offense, right close to their season total. Flustered the nation's leader in passing yards coming into the game. And they do have to work in their end-of-game strategy there. They're very conservative and almost let Washington back in the game with some pretty crucial defensive letdowns. But they made the plays early, flustered Penix Jr. and Charbonnet coming out party for Jake Bobo. Just the clear excitement for the Bruins. All greatness. You, you could argue one way or the other. It seemed like a lot of things I was seeing on social media, including with Washington being the favorites coming in this game on the road. Bruins proved them wrong. Prove some of their doubters wrong for now with still some crucial tests going forward. I know we're excited, but just know UCLA still has some crucial tests going forward. Next three weeks, two games can still help decide this Bruins season. But And what was somewhat of a must win for not only for UCLA this season, but a bit of a must win for the Chip Kelly era to kind of define this very senior-laden team moving forward. Gets the win at home in a short week. Now they get that extra day to rest, recover, recuperate, and prepare for a, a ready, a readying Utah team that is trying to prove that that Florida Week 1 loss was a fluke. So be prepared for the Utes next week. But Bruin fans, let's celebrate. Let's get another hands in the air, everybody. A clap time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fights. And most importantly to the, the pollsters, I know it's already a joke, but they've been given the Pac-12 love so far. The Bruins should not only be in the top 25, they should at least be in the top 20, arguably the top 18 with their 5-0 and start. Still a lot of things to prove. I understand that. But the Bruins, you're 5-0, unbeaten so far in the Pac-12. Beat a scrappy South Alabama team. They've played who's in front of them. The pollsters ranked Washington as high as they did. The Bruins got through them. And still some true tests to get through, but the, the Bruins, solid, 
you know, Stefan Blaylock with the pick. Everything was just going well. Leatu Latu, it seemed fitting, right, that Leatu Latu, the Washington transfer, medically retired by the Washington medical personnel, comes to UCLA, unretires, and is cleared by the UCLA doctors, is the one who gets the first sack on Pettix Jr. Thought I should uh, throw that out. He was outstanding. Murphy's fi- fine ways. There's so many things we can go through with this entire thing. We'll go in detail, in complete detail, on Monday when we can get a better full stats. This is just an immediate, immediate, immediate reaction to the UCLA win, 40-32 to 32 over Washington. And when it comes to the keys of the game, UCLA almost did everything perfectly to a T. They were able to come right out, out of the gate swinging, something they hadn't truly done all season long, and beat Washington to the punch in the first and third quarters. Washington made the mistakes, and the Bruins were able to fluster Michael Penix Jr. and hold DTR upright. The offensive line and defensive line held their own in a game that they absolutely had to, and now everything looks to next week to Utah. In the meantime, celebrate Bruin fans. A big win. UCLA wins it 40-32 to over the 15th-ranked Washington Huskies in the Rose Bowl in front of a pretty solid crowd on a Friday night. Glad to be of service. I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer. This Locked On UCLA postcast is done. Go Bruins. We're excited. The Bruins still undefeated for the first time this deep in the season in about over 15 years. So let's get excited, enjoy it, and then move to next week. 24 hours of celebration and then focus on the next week. Go Bruins and keep a clapping all night long until you annoy your neighbors, until you annoy everybody on the streets, in the traffic, if you're leaving the Rose Bowl, whatever it is. Eight clap all night long and then we prepare for next week. Go Bruins. Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Let's believe, UCLA Nation. Let's rock and roll, baby.